good and loud? No, it's good. No. That sounds different up here being this close. Okay, good morning, welcome. <laughs> If you came here this morning hoping to see Reverend Russ, because that's what we told you that you would get, um, he's still getting over what we can only call very generically the crud, <laughs> because it's coming back and he gets over it and it comes back again. So he thought it would be best if he rested a little bit this weekend. And so we're happy. I'm Beverly Pryor. Everyone knows, but if anybody's watching it some other time, then now you know. So let's just take a moment and get centered in prayer. If you'd like to close your outer eye, if that's comfortable for you. And just take a deep breath in. And release that breath slowly. And as that breath is leaving your body, just let all your hurries and worries and distractions of the morning just move right out of your body along with that breath. And with that process in mind, let's take another deep breath in and slowly release. We're bringing ourselves and our attention, our focus into this moment and this time. Fully present and fully in this moment. We claim this time together. We know that we've all come here today both to be a blessing and to receive a blessing. And setting our intention in this way and then opening all of our senses to see that truth unfold. We claim it. We know it. We believe in the power of intention, the power of prayer, the power of being together and being one for all of these truths and so much more. We simply say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is. Amen. So welcome everybody. Those of you who've been with us and those of you who've been away a little bit. We're glad to have everybody together online. Watching, watching virtually at some point in, in the future. And those of you in the room. Because we know that through our heart and through our intention. We're all one. We're having a shared experience. Regardless of the physical separation the perception that somehow we are not one. But we know the truth is that we are very much one. So let's say our opening statement as we affirm, there's only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God, the good, the omnipotent. Omnipotent, all powerful all the time. There's no place that that is not within us, around us, in our lives. That's why we can evoke oneness. We can evoke being together. I don't see any first timers in the room. We may have some at some point who watch this for the first time. Welcome and we're glad that you have joined us if that's what you do. If you don't, we're glad everyone's here and that's been here before. We're glad you keep coming back. We're always open to people who come and check us out and maybe become a part of our community. So we know that prayer works. Unity was founded on prayer. That's what Charles and Myrtle Fillmore initially were doing in their lives. We're having prayer circles and teaching people how that power of being together and setting an intention and claiming you're good actually changed lives. They had so many things from Myrtle's physical healings and Charles's financial success in the face of so many challenges. Their lives kept unfolding in more and more amazing ways 
And as they learn these new thought concepts, the metaf metaphysical principles, they shared them. They used to have a, a red letter um, healing that would send out a little newsletter in addition to the circles. And people were so, they so misunderstood that they would take the letters where it was printed in red because that was what they really wanted them to affirm. They would actually hold it on wherever their injury was, giving the power to the magazine or the newsletter rather than hearing that, no, the power is within all of us. Each of us on our own and collectively have that power to influence. June, do you mind if I share about? So last week when June was here, she was upset because her cat, June is on us a journey through the U.S. and she's got a camper and she parks it and then she goes and sees, and she had a cat with her, her cat Pepper, who she loves very much, cat got out last Saturday during the storm and when she drove up on Sunday she was upset and distracted by that. The cat's a rescue, she had all kinds of things going on in her head and we spoke about it and we affirmed together that she's going to hold that vision of tummy rubs and snuggles and bring that cat back to her through this visualization process. She also took the step of putting the cat box outside of her trailer. So you have affirmative prayer, intention, visualizing, and then taking action. You know, the Shakers call it pray and move your feet. So this is what we do, and this is what unity is based upon. And Pepper, by the way, came back in a trailer park, a, a, a RV park that he was not familiar with, but he found her, his way back to her. And you know, if she had stayed in that state of worry and fear and concern, who knows what would happen, right? But we have to open our heart and we have to set our intention, we have to know. And that may sound like a, a simple thing, but I know, and June knows, it was the prayer and the intention that led the cat back, you know? Also with action. So today as we join together in prayer, I want to remind you, hey Pam, come on in, uh, that Silent Unity is available for you to call or to write. I encourage you, if you've never called Silent Unity, oh, call this number and just, even if you just want to call for Christmas joy, they don't, it doesn't have to be something a str you're struggling with. They like to pray for happy things, but you can just feel it just, it's like a shower for your soul when they pray with you and you can feel it activated, but when you submit your prayers there or submit them here for us or online. What happens is we pray over your intentions. We know, we affirm those prayers are answered, but they also go to Silent Unity where someone sits in a room in vigil 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is a schedule of different people who go in and sit and hold that space. So just think about that vibration. You know, every single prayer I ever put in that box. I'm just going to show you. Yeah. So Pam just shared. Thing, it was. So Pam just shared for the people who are watching yeah. later or online that every single prayer that she's ever submitted every has been answered. But see, this is the thing that we need to be aware of. It's our intention. It's our awareness of prayer. All of your prayers will be answered. That's what June and I knew last week. If she kept worrying, that prayer would be answered. It's not the prayer she really wanted, but if that's the energy she was holding, it would be answered from that energy. That's just how it works. And you'll see a little bit later in my talk exactly why <laughs> from a scientific standpoint. But anyway, so with all that awareness, which I'm not telling you guys anything new, but I also have to speak to people who are visiting with us for the first time in whatever way. So let's just take a moment now and go back into prayer and bring that consciousness and that intention. You know, Jesus, our way shower and master teacher told us where two or more are gathered. It doesn't have to be, but it's beautiful and it does amplify that power when we have people to pray with. 
So whatever you have on your heart or on your mind today, if you haven't had a chance to write it down, just send it forth. Just know that you can, with your intention, include your prayer and your desire in this moment as we create this space together. So let's close our eyes if you're comfortable with that. Close your outer eye and just allow yourself to feel the support of your chair. Just focus on this moment. And together let's take a deep breath in and slowly release that breath. Another deep breath in. And as we did earlier with this breath, just slowly release any distractions, any tension, any frustration, and allow it to move out of your body along with your breath. We're dropping into this now sacred moment. We've created it together. We're sanctifying this moment. And we're calling on that power and that presence, that omnipotence. Because we know we can. And we know that every prayer is answered. It doesn't matter if it's for finances or health or relationship. There's nothing too great or too small to bring to a moment of prayer. So whatever it is, in our hearts and our minds and anything that anyone has submitted for any reason, we take this moment and we claim the highest and best. We may have an intended outcome, but what we know is the outcome will be for the highest and best and everyone con for everyone concerned. It may not turn out exactly the way we expect, but then we expect it to be even better. Because we know that's the power and the presence with which we live and move and have our being. And for this truth and so much more, we simply say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. Amen. Okay, thanks for indulging me in a little extra prayer, prayer, prayer time. So, Miss Jeannie's going to read the daily word for us today. So the daily word today is love. It's the third Sunday in Advent. I feel blessed to share God's steadfast love. As Advent season continues, I give thanks for the steadfast love of God, which dispels the darkness of conflict and loneliness with the light of harmony and togetherness. Love is personal and sacred human and divine, immediate and immortal. Amid seasonal greetings for joy and peace, I give thanks for the power of love. I am a divine being bringing the love of God into the world. Through my words and actions, I am kind and patient, compassionate and empathetic, encouraging and supportive. As I am blessed by love, I share love's blessing with others. I center myself on the Christ within and go forth as the heart and hands of love in the world. And our scripture today is beautiful from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Thank you, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we didn't light the earlier two Advent candles, yeah. but that just do now. <laughs> so we had hope and faith, and we had peace. peace. And now 
we have love. Yeah. Thank you. Move this forward. And I need to stop whatever I was doing with the participants. Are you going to do the relighting the candle of love? And let me see if I can. I think you can move. How can I get. Um, Go to the top of the first one, and you can minimize that. This one? It gives you your picture of uh, wherever it is. Huh. Oh, well. Let's see if we, sorry, just a little moment of, I thought we got everything figured out, but, you know, it doesn't seem like we did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got the camera on. Got, know why it's yeah, if you could grab your picture but the thing is is you're in your your screen looks um, okay uh, well it's just there we go maybe I can do that did that help nope well, okay. Can you click on it and make it larger? Yeah, I don't know why. You know, I, I looked to see who was on and then I, I got it here. kind of. Well, go to the bottom and see if you can shut off pin somebody. Hi, video panel. Is that yeah. awesome? It's still not size exactly right, but I think you could. I brought the margins in more this week. So anyway, so we lit the candle of love. Hey, Chris. And um, so let's affirm together as we light our candle of love, let us ignite a deeper understanding of the gift of love we are in this world. We express love because we are love. The love that is God expressing in our lives and our world. In our, in our end, in our, our love life. I put too many words in there. <laughs> but we share our true nature during this time of Advent. Divine love expresses through us and as us. And all we think and do and say. And it's conscious awareness that allows us to be that presence. Paying attention to are we being love? And how do we know that? By how we feel, right? If you're feeling uncomfortable and disharmonious, you might not be love in that moment. So it's time to pull back and take a deep breath and just check in with yourself. No blame and no shame, but we choose to share love with all who come into our lives. We express our love peace, faith, and joy, all the Advent qualities. And then from Romans 13.10, love does no harm to its neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And that means Hebrew law, right? The, the whole story of the Messiah and all. The Old Testament's full of a lot of law. <laughs> okay, so let's take a moment and get prepared for meditation. And, you know, I kind of extend this part because I like to have a song and then I'll guide you in meditation and then we'll have another song. So the first song is going to be a little bit more upbeat than you're used to during this process. Mm -hmm. But just go with that because it's the words of the songs that I want you to take in, eternalize, internalize and make them your own. If you'd like to close your eyes, let's we'll see if it's going to, there we go. If you'd like to close your outer eyes, just sit straight, let your spine be straight, from the tailbone up to the top of your head. Peace in my life is growing because I choose love. Love's always present, it's what I'm made of, I choose love.
song that's a little more energetic than we normally do before meditation, we can allow that excitement and that energy and that consciousness of I choose love to just become a part of our being. Together let's take a deep breath in and release. Breath connects us mind, body, and spirit, and also connects us one with another in this moment. Becoming fully present, present with that consciousness. I do have a choice, and I can choose love. And in this moment, I release, intentionally release, anything unlike the presence of love. Bring your attention to your breath as it's moving in through your nostrils. Notice how as you breathe in, it's just a little bit cooler. And as you breathe out, ever so slightly warmer. Breathing in cooler. Breathing out warmer. Now follow your breath as it moves deep within your body, deeper and deeper still, finding its way to that very center of your being, that heart center, where we know the presence of love, 
we know the truth of our being is love. Resting in that presence of love. Consciously calling forth that activation of the love energy present in our heart. In your mind's eye, just see a little speck of light and as you breathe in, the light grows brighter and as you breathe out, it expands. And from this consciousness and this connection that we have with one another, we let that light pour out from our heart center connecting with one another in this room, filling this entire building, moving out into all of Little Rock and out into Arkansas and across the nation. And let that love from the very center of our being pour out around the world into all the nooks and crannies, all of those spaces that may not appear to have love where someone may be calling for love we send our love out we may never be consciously aware of where it goes but we know it goes where it's needed we hold our entire planet humanity, the earth itself, in this envelope of love, we take this time for a moment of silence. We know our intention is powerful. We know our prayers are active. And we know coming together amplifies our intention. For all of these things and so much more, we simply say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just listen to these words and let them be your own. And release that breath. And just allowing our attention to come back to this moment and this time. But bringing back that energy of I am love. It's who we all are. Not just in this room. It's how we come into the world. That's the truth of our being. So my talk today is entitled, Love is the Answer. And there was a song, I think it was in the Wings of, um, Wings of Song hymnal, and I was going to try to lead you in it, but I'm not a singer, so I decided to spare you that. <laughs> but if you know, love, love, love is the answer, love is the answer, love is the way, it's a really nice little song, but I'm not a song leader, so you're welcome. <laughs> So love is one of those words that, you know, in February it gets really distorted because it's all about hearts and flowers and gifts and candy and romance and everything but universal principle of love. But love is who we are. Love is what the baby Jesus was all about, right? I mean, that coming into this world strictly as love. I know. 
I kind of cheated this week. I'm going to overload you with beautiful baby pictures. <laughs> it's kind of like a good way to open your heart, no matter what you're feeling today. Because, I mean, who hasn't looked in the face of a baby? And they're so pure, and they're just simply love. They don't attach it to anything. They still love you like a... I don't want to make a baby like a puppy dog, but if you forget to feed your dog once, they're still going to eat and they're going to forget about it and move on, right? And same with your baby. Your baby might cry a lot more and make some noise and say, hey, you know, pay attention to me and take care of my needs. But they're not going to stop giving you as soon as you give them the bottle or change their diapers. And then they just, they're happy again. What a wonderful way to be. Why do we unteach them that? Why do we start having them look at things differently? And look at that one. The little fee. That's sweet. You can't not feel love and joy when you look at everything attached to a baby. But just that, that feeling that we're having right now and collectively, we don't have to attach it to a thing because it is who we are. It is the reason that we're here. It's the reason you were born. There's, none of, there's no one in this room that didn't come in in that purity. Another one. I told you, I'm just gonna overload you with beautiful babies. It's not cheating, by the way, just because I'm doing it this way. <laughs> but because we can laugh, we can feel joy, we can connect, looking at all the ways that babies are beautiful. You know, the Bible talks about love a lot, mentions it 300 times. 300 times. But this is what we normally think, right? An intense feeling, this is from the Oxford Dictionary, an intense feeling of deep affection. We like or enjoy something. We say, oh, I love that. I love that movie. I love these shoes. I love whatever. We attach it to something outside of ourselves. But that is not love the way we're talking about what Jesus came to earth to show us, right? The presence of love that comes from within. We, not about attaching it to something outside of ourselves, but it's really hard. Because in order to feel that presence of love that exists within each one of us, we have to do a really difficult thing. Who knows what it is? We have to love ourselves. We have to first accept ourselves as we are. And we have to love ourselves. And for a lot of us who grew up hearing other messages, I grew up with a lot of criticism. So it's been hard for me over the years to, to get rid of those voices. You know, my hair's in my face, my bangs are too long, I've got too much makeup or not enough makeup, or am I losing weight or gaining weight, or are you going out of the house dressed like that, or where do you think you're going dressed like that? You know, it's just, if you get that, and you know, that comes from, uh, you know, just to say, in case you happen to have a similar person in your life, it comes from love, but that person is putting all the love about being outside, right? Like, you're going to get love and approval by the way you show up in the world. And we know that is an endless well. There's no bottom to it. You can never please everybody. You have to sit with yourself. You have to be the love so that you can reconnect with that innocence that we come into when we're a baby. Oops, didn't mean to go that direction. Now look at that. All swaddled. I mean, that sweetness, look at the peace on that face. Probably just fed, has all its needs met, diapers are clean, swaddled and feeling all hugged up. Just a peaceful moment. And we can all choose that. So metaphysically, in the revealing word, it says the meaning of love is the pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. Of all the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly 
the most beautiful. In divine mind, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony. The entire universe, I added entire, the universe and everything in it. The great harmonizing principle known to man. Love is a harmonizing principle. The vibration, yes. Yeah. Jean's hugging herself back there. It's harmonizing. It's a vibration into the world that we can choose how we show up. Now I know some of us feel if, if we've been taken advantage of or we've been hurt, we pull that love back in. But if it's our love, we can put it out into the world like we did in the meditation. No one can take it from us and no one can hurt us through it because we're just putting out the pure essence of love into the world. That's why we're here. That allows us to harmonize and connect with other vibrations similar to that. So it goes out all the way into the universe. We didn't do that in our meditation, but if you've ever been to a sound journey that I'm leading, we go all the way out and out and out and out and out and out. Because that's where we are. We're eternal beings. There's no beginning and end. There's a beginning and end to our experience in this human body. It might be 40 years like my grandfather. It might be 75 years like my dad. It could be 90 something years like my mom and my papa and my grandmother prior. But we don't know. Day to day, we don't know what that is. So this present moment is where we live and where we have that opportunity to be that resonance of love out into the world. And it makes a difference. First, it makes a difference with us, right? If I choose in the morning to set my vibration to love, not for any purpose other than somewhere it needs to be out in the world. You know, during COVID, when people were really struggling with the isolation, I did that constantly just sending out my love. And if I would wake up in the night and I couldn't go back to sleep, that's what I did. I just put my love out into the world to go wherever it was that someone was struggling with being alone. Someone was struggling with the isolation. Someone was struggling feeling unloved because they felt separated. But the fact is we are never separated except through our own minds. From our heart, we're always connected. Have you ever picked up the phone to call someone and they were just calling you? That shows you how connected. It's a simple thing. But that's how connected we are. There's no separation between us. It's where we put our focus, where, where our intention is. That's why we go through this Advent, the candles. We light them each time. Faith and hope. We kind of minimize hope and make it more about faith, right? Because faith is belief, we know. And then we talk about peace. And this week we talk about love. And next week Jeannie will talk about joy. And it'll be Christmas Eve already. Can you believe that? But this, this time of year, because that birth of Jesus in a human form, and then his consciousness moving to that Christ consciousness, he showed us that it's possible that we can actually achieve that ourselves. But it's our intention. What do we believe? Do we want to stay in the struggle or do we want to look beyond the struggle? We can be wherever we choose to be. We can be in the struggle or we can be in peace. We can express love out into the world. In 1 Corinthians, we remember this, 13. If I speak in the tongues of humans and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Right? It has to come from love. You've, you've known people who say they're all about peace and love, but they're all doing things that take advantage of people. Well, that's not. You know, this is what it's saying. Your words and your actions have to be aligned. You know, you could, like June, she took an action. It's, it was total love. She's focusing on her cat coming back, but she had to take an action to put the kitty, kitty litter. I don't have a cat, so I forget what you call it. Kitty litter outside. 
We have to take an action. And it's not always physical, it just can be an intentional action. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mounts, but do not have love, you can have faith in the opposite, right? If my faith is I'll never get my cat back, there's no love in that, that's fear, right? I'm contracted, I'm, oh my gosh, it's, I'm suffering from this thought process that I'm holding. The cat is a simple example, but there was so much love there. You see, it doesn't have to be the whole world. It can just be that moment with your cat. It doesn't have to be bigger than that. But if you have, you can remove mountains and you don't have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that my, I may boast about it, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You could show, oh, I'm a great sacrificer, you know. We get told that, right? The meek inherit the earth and blah, blah, blah. It's not about sacrificing everything, but not having love. It's like, I make a choice from love. In Mark 10, 14 and 15, I love this because Jesus is showing us how we can make that kingdom of heaven a reality for us. Kingdom of heaven is not some place you go after you die, by the way. Heaven and the opposite of that are in this present moment. And we choose where we live. Are you going to live in heaven or live in hell based on our thoughts, based on the vibration we put out in the world? So he says, this is uh, when the Pharisees were asking Jesus a bunch of questions and people were coming together. And so people started bringing their children because they wanted Jesus to bless their child, give them protection, heal them, whatever. And the disciples decided that was a bother and they were trying to keep the kids back. You know, kids can be noisy and messy and drooly and all that stuff. So they thought they were doing the right thing. But Jesus said, hey, hold up, you know. Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Belongs. That's when those babies have those peaceful faces because they come into the world knowing that that's where they belong. It's only through our entrainment that we teach them all the other things. He says, truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. So what does that mean, as a little child? Can we go backward and become a baby? Because we don't always think. <laughs> no, I told you, I'm going to overload you with baby faces. <laughs> But it's hard to go back to being a baby, right? It's hard to even remember when I was a baby, what did I think or what did I feel or what was I expecting? Because we don't always carry those memories with us. They're in there in your subconscious somewhere. So here are some childlike qualities that I recommend that you get in touch with so that you can make yourself like little children, so that you can have the kingdom of heaven in your daily life. Be curious. Be innocent. Now that doesn't mean you've never done something raucous or wild or made some choices or can't use colorful language. Being innocent means my heart is for the good of others. My intention is pure. I don't have to be innocent like I've never ever done anything worldly, but my consciousness is innocent and pure. Even if yesterday I had a bad thought about someone, in this moment, I can let that go. And I can go back to that innocent. Be open. Babies are wide open, right? Unless you're coming at them with a bad vibe, then they're going to go, nah. I was holding um, uh, James. I couldn't think of his name. James Buchanan's little girl one time. She was just maybe six or nine months old and some lady came up and was talking to me and I was, I was holding her and then she started complaining about something and the baby just kind of went ah! 
<laughs> because she shifted her vibe and KK was like, I'm not having that. And she looked at me and I said, you know, she liked it when you were smiling. <laughs> and the lady went, oh, but that's what babies do, right? No, don't bring me that. Not that we have to be that harsh with people, but we can redirect ourselves in a situation like that. Non-judgment, a baby doesn't care what color your face is or how many wrinkles you have or what kind of outfit you're wearing. If you're coming to them with love, they're wide open to it. They're like, yay, come play with me, I like you. They're loving because that's their essence. They're emotional, they let themselves have all the feels, right? They're gonna be hot and cold and up and down and sideways which is difficult sometimes, especially if they don't get their socks on exactly the way they want to, but they're being pure in their experience. And we can be the same way. doesn't mean we have to throw all the emotions on other people, but we can feel them and be true to them. And most importantly, allow them to move through us, not get in that, get stuck in a particular emotion being playful, allowing ourselves to be awestruck. You know, just stopping and go, ooh, wow. June and I went to the grocery store last night. She stayed with me last night. And we got out of the car and we're walking. It's like, oh, look at that orange sky. It was so beautiful. We didn't stop and pause and drink it in. We could have, though. We maybe should have, but we didn't. But we noticed it, and we shared that moment of noticing it. Because awe allows us to open up all that wonder. You can't have wonder if you're not willing to be awestruck. And of course, joy. Kids are just all about the joy. You know, have you ever watched them eat an ice cream cone or some have a new experience of something or just see another kid? Hey, you're my friend, right? If we just saw people and were like, hey, you're my friend now, they might think we're a little weird, but we can give them that vibe, right? We can give them that, I love you. I'm here for you. I'm present to who you are in this moment. That's making yourself like a little children. So, you know, I love to talk about the five principles because I think they're universal. But what if we changed it? You know, we're like, God is. We normally say God is absolute good everywhere present. Well, what if we said love, right? Because we've all grown up with that concept of God is love. Well, love is absolute good and everywhere present all the time. One of my teachers, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, says, just go into every situation expecting people to love you. Uh, what about that, right? Expect people to love you. And how do you do that? You love them first. You first show up with that love for whomever needs it. Not metering it out a little bit, only for my family, only for people who look like me or believe like me or think like me or speak like me. No, I'm just here with all the love. And it's present for you if you would like to have it, if you would like to experience it, if you would like to share it. And if you don't, that's okay. We're so sensitive to rejection that we don't even put ourselves out there as love. But if someone doesn't know how to take your love in, that's not really rejection. That's just them, believe me. They're, they'll go home and think about, how could I have accepted that? We've all been there, right? Someone's giving us love, and we're like, I don't know what you want in exchange for that. Right. So I'm gonna put up my guards, and I'm gonna sit back and question your motives. Little children don't do that. They just go, yay, give me a hug, right? except for the ones who are asked to sit on Santa's lap this time of year. <laughs> a lot of that, I've seen so many pictures that people post of putting their kids on Santa's lap and the, the kid's like, no, I'm not having it. So the I am, we are all an expression of love. We're all an expression of God. We are an expression of love in this world because we are the essence of God in the world. That's where we came into the world. That's why we're in the world. 
everywhere present, back to that whole, everywhere present just doesn't mean in our three-dimensional world. It means out into eternity. And for those of you who have really expanded thoughts and beliefs, into every dimension, right? Because we don't even know how many dimensions we're operating on at one time. We're focused on this three-dimensional experience. But why not just accept that there's more? We don't know all the more there is. Neither do we need to. We just need to be open and non-judgmental and accepting and be love. So here's, I love this. I love this diagram. So we know that we all have an electromagnetic field. We're going to get a little bit sciencey for a second. This is measurable stuff, right? So there's an energy that goes up into the heavens for centuries. They call it the upper Dantian and the lower Dantian. Down into the earth that connects us and grounds us with the presence and the truth of the three-dimensional world. And then there's this torus shape. It's like a donut. It moves through us and around us. It gives us an electromagnetic field. So think about that. We're all in this room and we're giving our electromagnetic field and we've infused it with love in every direction. Feel that for a minute. I can see on your face, Pam, you're feeling it. We're infusing our, we're choosing the field that we're putting out there. And then, as we're in this room together, it's overlapping. So it's amplifying, that's just physics, our vibrations amplifying out into the world. And we're choosing to be love. Together, we're putting more love out into the world. And d does that make you feel as good as it makes me feel mm -hmm. to know that this is who we are and this is how we can literally be, we get to choose that. And this time of year, we're just reminded of someone who literally did that in his life. And he walked on the earth with feet and he healed people and he taught people and he said to the, disi to, to the disciples, you, and not just the 12, but you, all of us, shall do these things and so much more. That's our place to be in the world. That's who we are. So here's a little bit more sciencey stuff for you, okay? You know I love the Greater Good Science Center with Berkeley, California. So, University of California, Berkeley, I guess that's how it's called. But it's called Biobehavioral Synchrony. That's a mouthful, right? Biobehavioral synchrony where our behaviors and biology begin to mirror those of our social contacts. It's not just familial, it's, it's whoever we choose to be with, right? We come in this room, we choose like-minded people to spend time with, and we begin to mirror. So when a mother and an infant, that's obvious, you know, for instance, their heart rhythms, their brain activity and hormones release become matched. Studies suggest that this process prepares babies to be able to synchronize in the future and have other relationships. We heard all those sometimes babies don't bond and they have they struggle. But when they do, and even as we grow into our adulthood, right, the, wh where we choose to put our attention and our time affects us biologically, hormonally, energetically. And other studies have found that elements of biobehavioral synchrony between romantic partners, friends, and even strangers. So parents, we know that time you spend reading a book, you're sharing time with your child, that's going to affect their immune system, their cortisol levels, their hormones, and their stress, and everything, all their whole experience and how they develop. And then being with friends, we know we have oxytocin that we share. It's another hormone. When we hold hands, when we hug, when mothers feed their children, it's an experience. It's a three-dimensional experience of something that is greater, that is all be about our vibration. The Taurus is also expressing through us. That's how Myrtle was able to heal. 
She used the visualization of Jesus sitting in a chair next to her, but she activated in her own body. This is the time of year we activate faith, peace, love, and joy so that we can express it into the world and we can express it with total strangers. You can express it with a total stranger without stopping and sitting that close to them. If you see someone, you can just give them through that energy field all the love that you can generate in that moment. And they can feel it. Have you ever done forgiveness work? When you do forgiveness work, suddenly you've cut that cord of whatever that was you were holding against someone. Lisa Walker and I were talking the other night when she was driving home because we were hanging out the other day with uh, June. And she was talking about that. There's a Bible scripture that says, before you take your blessings to the altar, if anyone has something against you, go and make that right and then come back and bring your blessings. But it doesn't always have to be go and like sit down, Jeannie, I did this and you felt that way and I, I don't want you to feel that way anymore because sometimes people are just going to hold on to it. It's not about that. It's about like the whole Ho'oponopono prayer is to clean your own energy, right? It's to clear yourself so that whatever you know, you have done your work. Then you can go to the altar. And then it's okay. But what happens is then Jeannie's released, or whoever, not you, I'm not picking on you, Jeannie, but <laughs> whoever it is in your life who is then holding something against you, that cord, that energy, is set free. There's no longer anything that could hold you back through that. So we have this opportunity to be love. We're reminded this time of year that's who we are. I love this visual because you just walk around. I know that I'm putting love into the world. I like this hat. <laughs> love your neighbor. So in Matthew 22, 36, Teacher, which commandment? This is a question also the Pharisees are asking Jesus as he's trying to, they're trying to catch him, right? Which is the greatest commandment? Because they want him to say something other than, you know, he also says, as June pointed out, pay your taxes, right? So he says, okay, because I know they're going to go back and report to Caesar exactly what I said, pay your taxes, but the first commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And this is the greatest and the first commandment. Meaning, love all that is, right? Because Jesus knew the Lord...